Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Building Championship Mindsets, the podcast. This is your host, Dr. Amber Selking, where we are in season 12 entitled A Decade of Greatness. We are celebrating the last 10 years of the Selking Performance Group, being in the world and serving it through really helping individuals, teams, and organizations unleash performance excellence by tapping into the power of mindset and leadership. And so it has been an incredible last 10 years stewarding this company, growing our team of amazing performance coaches. Um, and we've even been able to release a book earlier this year in 2022 entitled Winning the Mental Game, the playbook for building championship mindsets and really um, bring to the world a foundational element of what we teach at Selking Performance Group available to, to a larger audience. So if that's something of interest to you, please check it out on Amazon or on our website, www.selkingperformance.com. But in this season, we are really exploring what are 10 drivers? As, as I look back and reflect over the last 10 years, what are 10 different things that I believe have been critical to the success of our organization? And, and let me be clear, here's why organizations are successful. Organizations are successful because of how they're led and how they're stewarded. And ultimately, that leadership and that stewardship has to lead to impact and value in people's lives. And when it does, it sustains, it grows, it evolves. Now, are we a huge company? No. We've been doing a lot over the last 10 years serving other companies. And so it hasn't been a main focus to blow SPG up to this huge consulting company. Um, it's been something that we've been stewarding along, you know, through through five years of about five years of graduate school to, you know, five years of serving embedded within two large organizations, one um, serving as a vice president of leadership and culture for Lippert, which is a global publicly traded manufacturing company, and then embedded within the Notre Dame football team. And so, you know, the last 10 years, um, SPG has been um, a, a, a heart project, basically, you know, and, and just through the work that we've been able to do, it's been able to grow. And we've had more people reach out to say, hey, can you come speak to our organization and help our people understand the power of their mind? to show up and be the best version of themselves, not only here for us in a business perspective, but at home with their families or, hey, you know, I've got a team that we really need to, to collectively come together in the power of the mind. Can you or someone on your team work with us? Yeah. Or parents that reach out that says, hey, you know, my kid loves their sport and, and they love the game, but mentally they're just not able to get over a couple things. Do you have anybody on your team that can work with us? Yeah, absolutely. We do. And so it's sort of organically grown, not in the intent to grow massive as a company, but in the intent to serve. Right. And, and again, when you're really good at what you do and you position that value to the world, people want more of that. And so my intent for this season is to share some of the things that I believe have allowed us to be really good at what we do and to serve that value to the world. And so what we're going to talk about in today's episode are books. I mean, I know that seems relatively basic, but what books are you, are you reading? Are you allowing to mold your mind, to build your mindsets? Because we say all the time, right? The number one driver of our success are our thoughts, because here's what we know. We know that our thoughts affect our emotions. Our emotions affect our physiological response or your body's response. Things like your heart rate, your muscle tension, your visual field, your hormones, and ultimately how our bodies are going to drive or dictate our performance or how we show up in that moment. And so thoughts start that whole process. And the beautiful thing is we get to control our thoughts. We don't always control what thoughts come into our minds, but we do get to control what are we going to do with those thoughts once we're aware that they're there. And are those thoughts helping us, helping set that process of thoughts, emotions, physiological response, performance up for success, or are they undermining it? So we have to be mindful of what thoughts we're thinking. And then, so thoughts are important because they set that process up for success, but thoughts are also important because repeated thoughts build mindsets. And I'm going like this, right? Raising my arms up and down because I always think of thoughts as like bicep curls for your brain or mental reps for your brain. And what do we know? When we lift weights over and over, our muscles grow. Well, when we repeat thoughts over and over, our mindsets 
grow. Mindsets is not a buzzword. Well, it is a buzzword in the world that a lot of people are using, but a lot of people don't know what an actual mindset is. A mindset is a protein pattern that gets woven into your brain and changes how your brain sees the world. I tell my kids, it's like my, my kids, my athletes, right? That, that a mindset is like an Instagram filter on your brain. You know that if you put a different filter on a picture, it changes the whole experience of the picture that you're seeing. Well, if you have a different mindset, it changes the whole experience of how you're viewing that moment. So when we say we want to help people build championship mindsets, what I'm saying is I want to help you see the world through the lens and the eyes of a champion to see challenge and adversity the right way, to see winning and success the right way. To see people that you might not get along with or disagree with the right way, because it changes how we experience that moment. And so how have we been able to inform how we think and how we operate in the world? Well, one of them is through books, because while we get to choose and control our thoughts, where do you think we get our thoughts from? What we listen to, what we read, the people we surround ourselves with. And so everything in this season, if you really think about it, the drivers to success have really molded our mindsets, has molded the way that we think, the, the things that the actual things that we think about. And if we're not mindful of that, we are not going to position ourselves for success. If you're reading random stuff and listening to terrible music and watching ridiculous movies or just God bless it, the news on repeat. What thoughts do you think you have in your mind? What mindsets do you think you're building? Are they really helping you be who you want to be and do what you want to do in the world? Check yourself on that because it will ultimately facilitate your success or undermine your success. And when I say success, I mean in your marriage, in your relationships, in school, in your sport, in your business. What mindsets are you building? So I wanted to share with you 10 different books over now, listen, I've read more than 10 books. God bless it. In grad school, we read a lot, right? Um, but, but if I just sat down and had to come up with a list of 10 books that over the last 10 years I've read and have impacted how I operate, these were the first 10 that came to mind. So again, there's a lot of other books, a lot of other great authors out there that have been phenomenal and have impacted how I think and how I operate. But these were the, I sat down and made a list of 10 and these were the first 10 that came to mind. And so I'm going to share those with you so that if you're, if you're interested, you can read them. Um, and if not just to get you thinking about what are you reading? Right. And again, for me, I knew that I wanted to work from the locker room to the boardroom. So from the sports space to the business space. So everything I read, I try it to infiltrate sport or business or sports psychology, applied sport and human performance psychology, or, um, or business, right? And those be because I want to get information and thoughts to think about and inform my work through those areas that I know are critically important. Now, I also believe that it's important to read other things because you can get a lot of great creative ideas um, through how you operate and how you think through different types of reading. But again, here's my list of 10. So one of them that always comes to mind for me um, is The Talent Code by Dan Coyle. And he really talks about how talent is developed at the neurological level. And it's informed the intentionality with which I do everything, right? Whether it's um, I, I wanted to launch my company as soon as I started graduate school, not because I knew I would be consulting right away, but because what Dan Coyle talks about is that effort over time and really intentional focus helps myelinate um, at the neurological level, our understanding of what we do and how we do it. And so I applied that thinking to my business, right? Like I wanted to myelinate Selking Performance Group and, and allow it to roll off of my tongue of saying, you know, we work with individuals, teams, and organizations to build championship mindsets. And so the talent code has been a, an incredibly informational and pivotal way in which we operate. The next is Authentic Happiness by Martin Seligman. I mentioned this on the last episode of Experiences, but that was the first book I read in the field of positive psychology. And positive psychology really underlines a lot of what we do. I have a, a graduate certificate in positive psych as well and another online cert through um, uh, the University of North Carolina in this field because I just firmly believe that it really holds a lot of the keys 
that we know to high performance excellence. And so Martin Seligman was actually sort of the, one of the grandfathers of sports psychology or of positive psychology. I'm sorry. And again, authentic happiness was one of those first books that I read in that field that made me go, ah, there's a lot in here that if we teach people, um, you know, positive psych was born out of the fact that you know, for years, psychology focus, if you think of a bell curve, right, positive or psychology was really focused on the low end of a bell curve of people that are struggling with schizophrenia and depression and anxiety and all these things that are crippling and just getting them into operating more like the average people, right? But positive psych sort of begged the question, well, man, if we focused clinical psychology efforts on this side of the bell curve for all these years, What's going on on the other side of the bell curve where these people are thriving, are flourishing, are, um, you know, at the peak of their career and joy in what they're doing? What what's happening with those people? And if we can study them and understand it and then we taught the average how those people function, could we move the whole average up? And that's what I love about positive psychology. And so authentic happiness really opened my eyes to that whole world. And, and we went down a lot of rabbit holes in that way to inform how we operate as well. The next that I think about is uh, Brain Rules by John Medina. It's a really cool book that just goes through different rules of how the brain operates. And it gives and it helps you think about, man, then how could I create my classroom or my practices or my meetings in my business around ways that we know impact how the brain functions? So one of the things he, he sort of shares in there is that where the brain registers scent is actually very close in the brain to where memories are logged. That's why when you have a certain smell, you're like, oh my God, that reminds me of like spring break in 2007, right? Or, you know, whatever that might be for you. And so one of the ways that I applied that is in my classroom when I was teaching HR at Notre Dame, um, I had, a, you know, a diffuser that I would have a certain scent that when the kids would come in, like that was HR class. And, and then we would have that same scent when it had, when we had our exams, because it would help recall memories, right. And, and things that they had learned in class that they could apply to their exam. So just, again, another fun way that you can take a book and apply it because again, I'm saying books is one of our critical success drivers, not just from like a reading consumption standpoint, but how do you take that information and then apply it? to how you are showing up. That's why books have been a driver in our success. Um, another one has been Wide Awake by Erwin McManus. Um, this is a, anything by Erwin McManus, by the way, is like invigorating. I've read all of his books. Um, one of the last ones that I read is um, The Way of the Warrior. And actually, um, The Last Arrow is one of his more recent books that I am obsessed with as well. Anyways, anything by Erwin McManus is amazing. But Wide Awake was sort of was the first book of his that I ever read. And it just talked about how do we live life wide awake? not asleep, not, not in this light that like the world is happening to us and around us, but really what is inside of us and how do we bring that to the world and live in such a way that we can't wait to wake up, that we can't wait to see what the day has to offer and how we might be able to influence it. I mean, I just get adrenaline rushes when I read his work. So that's been a huge one for us. Um, Social by Matthew Lieberman. This really looks at like how the human brain is wired to connect. And this is why I think, you know, the, the global pandemic has had such a negative impact on human beings is because human beings are not created to live apart. Like, Kids are not designed to be by themselves in their house, to be up in their room on their devices by themselves. Human beings are wired to be with other human beings. What we know is that when they are, different hormones are released in our bodies that, that do a lot to protect our heart health, our mental and emotional health. And so this book was really powerful in just helping understand how human beings um, are created to be in community with one another. And again, informs how we think and how we operate about team dynamics and, and um, culture creation inside of an organization. 
A legendary book, right? The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. It, again, was one of the first leadership books that I read way back when I was in probably junior high. I mentioned on the last episode, my mom, she was an extension agent in Ohio for 20 years, which was all about youth development and um, building, you know, leaders of tomorrow. And so she had us reading leadership books and thinking about leadership from a very young age. But John Maxwell, he's written over 70 books and they're all on leadership. So he's really one of the forefront leaders and has been a huge molder of my mind in terms of how leadership works, how, um, why leaders are so important. And so 21 irrefutable laws of leadership are just 21 laws of how leaders can make or break a a family, a team, or an organization. So that's a pivotal work of his, but again, anything by John Maxwell will help you be a better leader wherever you show up in the world. Um, Next Generation Leader by Andy Stanley. I actually read this when I was an undergrad at Notre Dame, when I was studying abroad in Spain. And it really just, I, I remember it crystallizing in my mind of like, that's the kind of leader I want to be in the world. And it was funny when I was then in uh, graduate school out at, um, actually I was doing my PhD at Missouri. I reread it and I was like, holy smokes, I forgot how much of this book informed how I think about leadership and young people being able to have a positive impact in the world. And so that's why I put this on my list because I reread it in the last 10 years. And I was like, dang, this has been something that has been a bedrock in my sort of building mindsets of how I think about leadership. So definitely check that one out. But again, anything by Andy Stanley is is really awesome. Training Camp by John Gordon. That was the first John. I, I mean, I guess I was I'm looking through this list that came to my mind. A lot of these authors, I've gone on to read a lot more of their works, but the ones that have really impacted me in deep ways have been the first of their books that I read, not necessarily their first book, but the first of the ones that I read. And so Training Camp by John Gordon, um, it's about a young man who is a football player who gets injured, whose athletic trainer really helps him navigate the journey, not only healing from a physical standpoint, but from a mental and emotional standpoint as well. And so um, I, I think that's, again, I knew I wanted to work in football. I had a heart for that space, but that's also where I saw like, man, it's not just the mental performance coach that helps navigate that, but everybody inside of a system or a team is important to them mental, emotional, physical healing and performance of everybody inside of that system. And then at the end of it, he's got this list of 11 traits of the best of the best. And I've had that pinned over my desk since the first time I read that book. Um, I've even printed it out for our executives in one of our executive meetings. And so that's an an awesome book. But again, anything by John Gordon is incredible. They're, They're short, simple story that's in story form. So they're easy to read and really will shape how you understand how you operate and how that impacts the world around you. Um, th- one of the, the, the ninth book I'll share with you is the power of positive coaching by Dr. Rick McGuire. Um, I got the honor and privilege of doing my PhD, um, under Dr. McGuire. So when you do a PhD, you have an advisor. So you usually go to a place because of another person and their influence, um, in their field of expertise is one that you really align with and want to, to grow in. And so I got to serve um, Dr. Rick McGuire in my PhD, and we've since stayed close. He has recently joined the Selking Performance team, actually, as a strategic advisor. Um, He's been a strategic advisor to me for years, but um, we made it official on the 10-year anniversary, actually. So on um, September 29th, I reached out to Dr. McGuire and asked if he would officially join the SPG team as a strategic advisor, uh, because he's informally been doing it since I met him in 2000. 14, I guess. And so I'm so grateful to have him in my life, but the power of positive coaching, um, is a book that really, I mean, it's a book, but again, I've got to spend a lot of years with him. So the book is his voice, right? And, and I hear it every day when I think about things, but just the importance that coaches have in the system. Dr. McGuire always says sports psychology best happens to and through the coach. And if we extrapolate that to think leadership development, culture development best happens to and through the leader, those things start to come together and help us understand why coaches, why leaders, why parents, why teachers are so critical 
to the mental performance or to how humans show up in the world. And so check that one out. And then the last one that I'll leave you with is the Bible. Um, if you've listened to this, you know, my faith is really important to me in general, my Christian faith, but man, regardless of where you're at on your faith journey, when you just read the Bible as a book, um, it's crazy that everything we know in the field of sports psychology and brain science is in the Bible (laughs) or everything that we know in leadership is in the Bible. And so it doesn't, I'm, I'm not, you know, pushing Christianity on you, but it's a phenomenal book. And if you just want to check out like a book of wisdom, I always tell people, like, if you just want to check out the Bible, check out the book of Proverbs. And literally, if you have a Bible and you open it up right into the middle, Proverbs is right in the middle. So it's really easy to find. And the other cool thing about Proverbs is that there's 31 books in Proverbs and there's 31 days plus or minus in every month. And so it's just a really simple thing. Like what's the date today? You know, whatever the date today is, you just, you just open it up to that day of the week and boom, if it's the 10th, you turn it open to the 10th and you read Proverbs 10 and Proverbs again is a book of wisdom. So it's like, helpful ways to live your life that talk about financial management, relationships, leadership, uh, mental and emotional health. All of that is in the book of Proverbs. So I just think it's a phenomenal book to give us stories and um, practical ways to live that will help human beings flourish and be the person that we've been created and called to be in the world. So there's 10 books that over the last 10 years have really shaped how we think, how we operate, um, and, and the mindsets that we've built in how we try to serve and add value to the world, to truly help people understand the power of mindset and leadership to unleash who they are and who the team or organization desires to be in the world. So your championship mindset training for this week is to, I want you to do two things actually. One, I want you to write a list of 10 books that have impacted your life. And then secondly, I want you to, with the book you're reading right now, or if you're not reading a book, get a book. And then I want you to think, how do I apply this book to my life? Don't just read the book, apply it. Allow it to shape who you are and how you operate. But again, be mindful of what books you're reading because they will shape you and influence how you show up in the world. So choose wisely, but let books be a critical driver to your success and who you are and what you do in this world. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, again, please reach out to me directly, Dr. Selking at selkingperformance.com. If there's anything we can do for you for keynote speaking, performance coaching or consulting. Uh, Check out our book, Winning the Mental Game, the playbook for building championship mindsets and follow us on all the social media platforms. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Champ Mindsets, on Facebook at Selking Performance Group and on TikTok at Championship Mindsets. Thank you so much for tuning in. You've been listening to Building Championship Mindsets, the podcast. This is your host, Dr. Amber Selking. And from the locker room to the boardroom, I just wanna challenge you to continue building your championship mindset.